Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, you've pretty much heard of chat GPT. What you may not know, uh, maybe you do, but what you may not know is that OpenAI allow you to access its various large language models. So things like GPT 3.5, GPT 4, over an API, a programming interface, so you can incorporate it into your own programs and services. Now, I've played around with that a little bit and I often wondered, well, which model is best to use in terms of absolute speed? I want a quick reply. Uh, which model should I use? GPT 3.5, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and so on. So in this video, I want to do a performance benchmark of the different uh, language models that are available from OpenAI. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay then, so which is faster, GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo, or GPT-3.5 Turbo? Now, uh, OpenAI offers several different large language models. Uh, the models are different in terms of their price, their functionality, and their speed. So we've got GPT-3.5 Turbo. This is the flagship model of the GPT-3, 3.5 family, supports 16K context windows, and is optimized for dialogue. And that's often the one you get for free when you you know you go to the ChatGPT uh, website and you're not paying any of the premium uh, kind of things. Then we've got GPT-4, of course, which brought in a whole bunch more functionality, broad general knowledge and domain experience. GPT-4 can follow complex instructions in natural language and solve difficult problems with accuracy. And much has been said, including by me on this channel, about the newer capabilities of GPT-4. And then very recently, we had the announcement of GPT-4 Turbo with 128K context, fresher knowledge, and the broadest set of capabilities. And it is the most powerful of the GPT-4 family. And it's actually cheaper to use than GPT-4. You know, when I'm talking about cheaper, I'm talking about if you're using it via the API, where you are charged per token in terms of input and output. Now that's the general marketing names, but now there are some actual individual models that you can select when you use the API to talk to uh, these LLMs. So you've got just the standard GPT-4, a snapshot of GPT-4 from June 13th, 2023. Then you've got GPT-4-1106 Preview. That's the latest GPT-4 model. Really, that's the turbo one with improved uh, instruction, follows JSON mode uh, and so on, returns a maximum of 4,096 output tokens. And then you've got GPT-3.5 Turbo. That's the snapshot of GPT-3.5 Turbo from the 13th of June, the same time as GPT-4 there. And then you've got GPT Turbo 1106. This is the latest three, uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo model with improved instruction follow JSON mode and it outputs a maximum of 4K. And eventually this will become the default GPT-3.5 Turbo model uh, in a few uh, months from now. And then there's also an older one. Uh, so this is from March. Now do notice, look, some of the dates here. Look, you see, look. 0301, you see this is March the 1st. And so these are all different dates about, you know, November the 11th, basically. So these are the different things. So this is an older one going back to March that you can still use as a model uh, and, and uh, you can test the capabilities and the speed, which is what we're going to do in this video. So let's just talk a little bit about prices. So basically 1,000 tokens, that's input, and 1,000 tokens output. So a token is not a character, neither is it a word. It's like half a word or three quarters of a word, just depending on how the English language or the language that's being used has been split up internally. But it's something that the, the model outputs. It outputs not in full words, it outputs in partial words, which then get called uh, tokens. And so for every thousand tokens of input, you get charged three cents uh, US dollars. And for every thousand tokens that are output, you get charged six cents. That's the GPT-4 model. The GPT-4 Turbo model, which is currently 1106 preview, that's much cheaper. So it's only one cent 
for a thousand input tokens and three cents, half the price basically, for a thousand output tokens. So that's good pricing. But then when you get to GPT Turbo 1106, I mean, it's just really, really cheap. So look at this 0.001 and 0.002. So uh, 10 times cheaper basically uh, than any of the others. So that makes this a very interesting model to use in terms of the pricing if you're paying for those API calls. So what's my methodology for testing? Well, basically I'm using the OpenAI API via Python with Langchain. And basically I send in a request to do a certain thing. We'll talk about those more in a moment. And I time to see how long it takes to get back the reply. Now, of course, there are some unknowns. Capacity, how much hardware has OpenAI allocated for each particular model? Are there more servers? Is there more physical hardware for one type of model than for another? We don't, we don't know that. And also current server load, how many people are using a particular model at the time of testing? Network delay, of course, might be something, but that's probably only a fraction of a second. As you'll see, many of these things take 10, 20, 30 seconds to actually reply. So the fact that there is just, you know, half a second somewhere in network latency isn't really bothered to be factored in. And so what I've done, is I've repeated the test several times and over several days to try and get a picture to make sure I didn't hit a peak load moment or something like that. And, it, and, it, and the picture is pretty consistent, I must say. So the first question I ask is list five places for a cheap family holiday within the USA. A, a question you could easily ask ChatGPT via the, the web interface. You can also ask it via the Python interface. By the way, if you are interested in how you access OpenAI's API via Python, if you think that would be good for a tutorial, do let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, I will do that. So what we've got here is we've got five different models listed. Three of them are ChatGPT 3.5 turbo models. Two of them are ChatGPT 4. And this is the absolute time in seconds, in the elapsed time. So sending off that request takes around eight seconds for GPT-4 to reply, whereas it takes 24.4 seconds for GPT-4-1106, which will be GPT-Turbo, to reply. But it takes 26 seconds for GPT-3.5 Turbo to reply. But look at this down here. These other two uh, Turbo ones, about two seconds, basically. So we can see there's a huge difference uh, in what the different elapsed times are. Now, what's going on there? Why does it take GPT-3.5 nearly half a minute to reply, and yet the new Turbo one, just two seconds. Well, it actually comes down to how much response does it give. So this is the number of characters in the response. So as you can see, this fairly much matches what we saw in terms of the actual time. There's a difference here. Look, let's just go back a slide. There's a difference there. But the other four models, basically, it corresponds to the size of the output to how long it took. So there were 710 characters in the reply from GPT-4. 2,270 characters in the reply from GPT-4 Turbo, 1,300 characters in the reply from GPT Turbo 3.5, but only 100, 120, 130 characters from the other one. So these only took a couple of seconds to reply because they were only outputting such short replies. So let's let's look at this. This is GPT's four reply. Took it was 98 words in total, as you can see. Yellowstone National Park, known for its geysers and hot springs and wildlife. So it gives you quite a long, complicated reply there. If you look at GPT. For Turbo, even greater reply, uh, some markdown replies here. So this would have been in bold. Uh, there was an introductory paragraph here. And so 351 words total that was uh, output. So you can see that between these two, this one's quicker because it gives less. And then if we actually look at the GPT 3.5 Turbo, it just lists them. There's no description, no introductory paragraph. It just lists five places that you could you could go to. So you can see that it very much depends on the output. And because it depends on the size of the output, what we need now is a response rate. How many words or how many characters are output per second of how long it takes. That's what this graph is. So this is words per second. So GPT-4 was able to output 12 words a second. GPT-4 Turbo, 14 words a second. So it is faster in that sense. It is turbo. And then these ones here, around seven to nine 
words a second. Sometimes GPT 3. Point, uh, this one GPT 3.5 Turbo 11.6 was even higher, and we'll see that in other tests. This can go even a bit higher again, depending on on server load and things like. That. So of the GPT 3 ones, we can see that 3.5 Turbo 11.06 has the fastest response rate. These two have a much faster response rate, but as I say, this one waxes lyrical so much that it takes up all of its time in generating that response. Okay, so my next question, I thought, well, let's see if I can limit its reply. What is a bumblebee? Keep your reply to under 25 words. That's what I asked it to do. And so we can see, first of all, that the replies come back much quicker. Three seconds for these ones here, one and a half seconds for these one here. So again, because I was saying limit your reply, it was a faster turnaround, three second to uh, one and a half to three second turnaround. But what was the size again? Well, here we can see 135 characters for GPT-4, 124 characters, 113, 77, 83 for these other ones here. So uh, a longer reply from GPT-4, and yet actually it came back in a faster time than the other two. Uh, so we'll look at the rate in a second, but what were some of the replies? Well, GPT-4, a bumblebee is a large, hairy social insect known for its black and yellow body, known for its ability to buzz and pollinate plants. So that was this uh, reply here that took 3.1 seconds. If you go with the GPT-3.5 uh, Turbo 1106, a black and yellow flying insect that collects nectar and pollen from flowers. So a much shorter reply that came back in half the time because the reply is half as long, basically. So what does that translate to response rates? So here we can see the response rate, 7.6 words per second, 6.1 words per second, 6.1 words per second, 7.5 words per second, and then nine words per second for this Turbo 0301. So again, you can see that the length of the content matters. And when it's a very short content here, we can see that the reply rate is basically the same. I can see here, six or seven words a, a second, basically, in what's coming out. So that's interesting. So if you are using the APIs and you do need replies to come back faster, a good thing is to limit the number of tokens it sends back out to you. So that might help your overall uh, performance. And then one final one, I thought, well, what about, let's go back for a big input. So rewrite, there's a thousand word article that I took. Um, and then I said, basically rewrite the words to improve its flow and readability uh, and et cetera, et cetera. I've got a kind of a little prompt that I put in there about fixing spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. So a fairly compre comprehensive request. But the point is there's then a thousand words of input that it has to go through. So here's the elapsed time again. As we can see, half a minute here from GPT-4, 42 seconds from GPT-4 Turbo, a minute and a half from GPT 3.5 Turbo, but then very quick replies. Eight seconds from GPT 3.5 Turbo 11.06 and 20 seconds from the older one from March. So again, a big difference in the re reply time, the elapsed time, and say this one taking a minute and a half to reply to do that same job. But again, it's all about the size of the output. So if we look at that, this is again the number of words in this particular case, which so is a thousand words going in. GPT gave me 500 words output, so did the Turbo one. GPT 3.5, which took a minute and a half, well, it came up with nearly 800 words reply. So it was a much more of a rewrite than a summary. It kept it closer. And then the other two that were much faster, 250, 300 words. So again, you can see the, 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 the real thing is how much does it have to output? What's the output uh, that it's giving you? And so if we turn that into words per second, we can see that it's 15.3 here for GPT, 14 for ChatGPT4 Turbo. Okay, much lower for ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo there, so it definitely struggles on that. But 3.5 Turbo 11.06, very fast, so 33.7 words a second. So of the three GPT models, this definitely has had the highest response rate uh, overall, and then 15 seconds here. So what can we say about that? Well, basically, GPT 3.5 Turbo 11.06 is fastest in terms of its absolute speed, partially because it has a fast word rate, as we've seen, partially because it gives out shorter answers. So really, it is the cheapest, because you can saw it was very cheap to use, 10 times cheaper, and yet a very capable option. So if you are using an API backend, then you should definitely look at the 3.5 Turbo, because it's not gonna cost you too much to use, and it's still give, and it's snappy. So you're gonna get a fast reply, rather than waiting a minute and a half <laughs> for the reply 
uh, to come back. So this is very, very interesting. And then of course, if you do need GPT-4 functionality, if you like the way that GPT-4 can handle whatever task it is you're doing, rewriting, creating, whatever it is that you're doing. So it can be slow in terms of absolute speed, but you are getting more output. So for the output you do get, remember it's it, sometimes it can wax lyrical, it has a, a relatively fast uh, word rate uh, and it's cheaper than the vanilla GPT-4. So really we should all be moving over to this one and I'm sure this will probably get called uh, GPT-4 Turbo as a, as a model name uh, pretty soon. I think that's what it says on the OpenAI website. Okay, so there you go. Now I hope you found that data useful and it'll help you choose which language model you should use via the API. As I said, if you think a Python tutorial would be useful, do let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to this channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.